Microsoft, they do stuff. <laughs> Did you know that? Today we're talking about some of the spec bumps and some of the new products that Microsoft released at their very sudden, but I guess we got a warning earlier. I just wasn't paying attention. The recent event today, but believe it or not, I wouldn't actually be covering this unless there was something that interested me. So you gotta stay tuned to find out what that is. Let's begin. So luckily across the board, we got a not massive, but generally decent spec bump across most of the Surface devices with the exception of the Surface Go. And it looks like there's not much changes in the Surface Book department, but those must be doing fine on their own as it is. So the most popular Surface product, the Surface Pro got an update. Now Microsoft has unveiled the Surface Pro 6, which is supposedly getting the eighth generation CPUs that Intel has recently released at more than 67% faster than the previous generation. So overall things are faster. Curious to see how this thing is able to cool those CPUs. I'm sure it's fine. Not trying to throw shade. Though putting the product in the shade might help keep it cool. Anyway, they still got an all-day battery, so if you're a Surface Pro fan, things just got better and it still starts at $900, so overall, yay. Just, it's better now. Comes in new color options, which look pretty dope. And now they've also upgraded the Surface Laptop. I'm calling it the Surface Laptop 2. Thank you, Microsoft, for keeping it simple with just simple numbers. Wish you would have done that to the Windows operating system lineup, but that's okay. Also getting the new Intel 8th generation CPU, so things should be looking around 85% faster than the previous generation, which seems to be a very decent spec bump. Still starting at $1,000 and giving you 14 and a half hours of battery life, depending on what you're doing, but still, I'm confused by the existence of the Surface Laptop. If you want us to touch the screen and turn it into a tablet, why did you make a device that can't do that, not even flip all the way around? But to the people out there who just wanted a regular Windows 10 supporting laptop, they've made it even better than it was before. Also getting this new color and finally it took them long enough they're updating the surface studio with the now surface studio 2 which very late to the game is finally getting USB-C with a new graphics card that's looking to get you a 50% boost in GPU performance which was definitely needed because the previous existing surface studio was getting pretty dated it had been out for quite a while and yeah this was long overdue for sure the display on the surface studio is 38% brighter with 22% more contrast and as previously mentioned mentioned over 4,000 different levels of pressure sensitivity when you use the Surface Pen 2 on the Surface Studio. So overall, everything just got better. I'm very confused what the Surface Studio 2's market is, as well as the first Surface Studio, which I always found interesting. I don't really hate anything about it. I just had a hard time trying to figure out what their angle was, other than artists, people who like to draw things, because you got a big old desktop and then you can bring it down here. But in terms of specs for dollar, for a PC, it's not incredibly unique. You're definitely paying for that touch screen, you're paying for that sleek design, and the fact that it can swivel down like this. If you want a desktop PC, even an all-in-one desktop PC, there are much better deals you can find elsewhere, but basically what the Surface Studio is, is a giant Surface Pro on a stick that you can swivel down and draw on. And it's a very beautiful display, but how many people out there need a canvas of that size, but also need the extra GPU so they can work on more graphic intensive tasks? I guess people who do 3D modeling or animation and stuff like that, but I don't know. I just, I thought it was a narrow market and there's nothing wrong with that there's people out there who like the surface studio and have a need for it and they got a spec bump but all of those things i really wouldn't care about and if that was all microsoft announced i really don't think i would talk about it the thing i'm most interested in is the new surface headphones which really made me tilt my head when i read it because i was like microsoft's going into audio they haven't done much in the audio department they've been adopting cortana into different smart speakers out there which i'm sure all of you use cortana on your smart speakers right <laughs> i don't think you you even use Cortana on your Windows computer, but a lot of what they described with the Surface headphones sound interesting. Now, full disclosure, these are definitely expensive, starting at $350. Yikes, yeah, that, that's a little bit high. But what I liked about them is that they're approaching kind of what they learned with the Surface dial into the Surface headphones. So both ends of the headphones are able to rotate. One of them affects volume and one of them affects noise cancellation. I actually really, really like this idea because many headphones out there use touch control controls on the side of them. Like I was sent these Braven headphones. They're not a sponsor. They just wanted me to try them and they're pretty good. They've got some noise cancellation features. They have a fairly decent battery life. The sound quality is okay. Everything about them is fine, but the touch controls on them definitely throw you off. Sometimes you tap them on accident or you will skip a song and play a song. And they have so many unique tap controls on the side of these that you can accidentally trigger so often that one time there's some type of touch control that actually makes you redial your last phone call 
And let's just say when I use these, I've accidentally called many, many people when I was hoping to listen to music. And that, that was just confusing. So I don't like the touch control stuff on a lot of pairs of headphones. I'm not saying there's no way not to do it because for one, the Surface headphones also have tap features so you can activate Cortana, very similar to AirPods and Siri. But I'm a much bigger fan of the mechanical idea of rotating the side of the headphone to raise the volume or to affect the noise cancellation. If you need to hear what's around you, you can turn that dial down. And if you need the music louder, you can turn that other dial up. I think that makes way more sense. That seems very, very logical and modestly upset that I've never thought of that. That's really smart, Microsoft. You got my attention. I don't know if you guys remember, but a few months back, I was at an Apple store trying out some Beats headphones, which I'm usually never a really big fan of, but I tried on the Beats Studio headphones and they sounded pretty good, but I was on the fence about them because they were $350 and that was a lot. And it drove me absolutely nuts that they charged via micro USB. I was like, you put the W1 chip in these headphones. So you know that this is for iPhone users, yet you didn't put lightning or you didn't put USB you see, you didn't put some type of new reversible port and you're still paying $350, which means anytime I travel, anytime I use these headphones, I'm gonna have to pack around also another cable just for that pair of headphones. And it's an old cable that we've been moving on to USB-C and Lightning at least. Either one of those could have justified the purchase, but because it didn't have that, that kind of drew the line for me. And I was like, this is just stupid. But by the looks of it, the Surface headphones appear to charge via USB-C, which is funny given Microsoft has been very, very late to the game when it comes to the USB-C supporting accessories. So you'd think they would be kind of out of the loop there, but no, turns out they're not. They got eight different microphones on these headphones so that you can have really crystal clear phone calls. And by the way, they're Bluetooth, which means that they literally will pair with any device, whether it's Android, iOS, Windows computer, Mac, they're universal, which I think was really, really good. And honestly, Microsoft couldn't afford to do some type of exclusive W1 chip replicant. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm fairly interested in this pair of Microsoft headphones, which honestly, that's not where I thought my tech channel was gonna end up today. I really like to try them myself, obviously. Audio is very subjective depending on who you're listening to, but I'm sure that at this price point, they're able to fit pretty decently sounding speakers in there with a fairly good battery life. I'm not really interested in the Cortana integration. I've messed around with Cortana on our PCs here and with the Cortana app on iOS. Yes, you can do that if, if you want to. I, you shouldn't, but you can do it. I'm pretty sure Cortana would basically be good for like reminders and writing notes down. And in terms of headphones, I really wouldn't need her for that, but I think they could be really, really good for people who are still wanting to adopt to the wireless game, but are looking for something a bit more intuitive and premium. And they also, for the people who still care about this, have a headphone jack built into them, which the only instance I would use that is when we're doing our Talos of Gaming streams on Twitch, because Xboxes still don't support third-party Bluetooth headphones. You have to buy a different type of wireless headphones just for the Xbox, which I don't want to do, but hey, Microsoft, you made the Xbox. Shouldn't these pair with the Surface headphones without the audio jack? I don't know. Either way, these look really, really interesting to me. And I'm not saying I'm absolutely going to buy them, but I'm tempted because that would definitely be more than I've ever spent on a pair of headphones. But when they're that intuitive and that clever and still be able to support USB-C, have good phone calls and be Bluetooth, that's my kind of headphones. And like I said, I'll have to try them out myself, decide if the audio quality is good, then I might check them out. Let me know if you're interested in any of the stuff Microsoft released today, but primarily, what do you think about these headphones? Very interesting move by Microsoft. Makes me wonder if Apple's got something in the pro over-ear headphone market. All that good stuff, let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.